This coming Thursday, May 9th, is the 27th National March for Life in our nation's capital, Ottawa. It is the largest annual protest that takes place in front of our parliament buildings here in Canada. It takes place in May to mark the day in 1969 when a federal bill was passed that decriminalized abortion but allowed it under certain circumstances. In 1988, however, the Supreme Court of Canada struck down Canada's abortion law as unconstitutional. Since then, there has been no abortion law in Canada, allowing the procedure to take place for free across the country throughout all nine months of pregnancy. The march in Ottawa began in 1998 and is now surrounded by events throughout the week, including a candlelight vigil, the Rose Dinner, a Mass for Life at Ottawa's Cathedral, a youth summit, and of course, the rally and march on May 9th. Canada is a country where abortion and euthanasia are legal and quite common. This is a country where it is accepted that the most vulnerable are commonly abandoned. It is because of this that this year's theme is taken from the prophet Isaiah, I will never forget you. This is a call for all of us to be witnesses to the dignity of each human person. On May 9th this year, Let's join thousands of Canadians in Ottawa and remind our politicians to never forget the child in the womb, the mother of an unexpected pregnancy, the person living with a disability or mental illness, the senior who needs care. Let's remember our responsibilities towards each other and the irreplaceability of each individual soul created intentionally by God in His image and likeness, a God who never forgets us. I'm Deacon Pedro, and this is the Salt and Light Hour. Hello, and welcome to an all-new Salt and Light Hour. I'm Deacon Pedro, and sitting here with me, uh, all the way from sunny Los Angeles, is Mark Matthews. Hello, Deacon. Always welcome. a pleasure to be here. Welcome. Is it sunny in Los Angeles? It is. Yeah, I, it, in a special kind of way. It's feeling very much like summer here, finally. Oh, good, because it's not here. It's just raining. Well, <laughs> April, April rains. It rains in April, and May, hopefully, we'll have flowers, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, April showers, May flowers. Yeah, all of that course, good stuff. of course, all that good stuff. Um, next week is the March for Life uh, mm, in, in Ottawa. Ottawa heard, that I right, yes, yeah, I presume that you've been there a few times. With not for the one in days. Ottawa. I mean, I've oh, been to various really? march marches for life, but actually, no, sorry, I have been there a long time ago, twenty years ago. Yeah, I wondered with, when you were with CCO. No, would you? Yes, not have yeah, that's gone exactly when I was there. Yeah, so always uh, exciting for us to. Uh, which is which is good that that it's not the one in, in Washington to go to Washington in January when it's usually like twenty <laughs> below, and I think this year they had like a blizzard, um, and still like two hundred thousand people show up. I I grew up in Canada. I have never been as cold as I have in my life as being in Washington on a chilly day. It is cold. Yeah, okay, There's something so. about the humidity. It's the chill of the politician's souls. The chill. Okay, so here is going to be my. You just made me think of something. We should encourage Americans to come to Ottawa for the March for Life because it won't be freezing. <laughs> although it's it is true it, it, although it is ottawa and it could snow in may i suppose yeah but yeah so the the march for life is on may 9th uh there's there's events the whole week but the, the march is on come may on 9th. americans come and help Thursday. your neighbors to the north yes yes because everything that you do there affects us here and i guess what we do here could could have yeah. impact and, down there as well and as a dual citizen i feel like i have the legitimacy to say to both of you you know, Americans come to Canada. Americans come to Canada. March for Life. That's it. That's gonna. You're gonna be the new undercover <laughs> spokesperson for spokes get get Americans to come to the March for Life in Canada, the National March yeah. for Life in Canada. Okay, so um, Mark, today we're gonna be joined by Marie Claude Lalonde. She's the National Director for Aid to the Church in Need for mm -hmm. Canada, and okay. uh, yeah, they uh, come once a month to do a little. Uh, a little segment featuring the work of Aid to the Church in Need around the world, doing a lot of humanitarian relief around the world, and particularly through the churches and partners. And uh, today she's going to talk to us about Sudan. Did you know that there's a conflict in Sudan? Um, I did. I don't know anything about it. Okay, but and you might be thinking, you're. I, I bet you that you're thinking like me, that it's like the conflict in Sudan that was like five years ago. 
Okay, I probably because there's am. yeah no this is a new conflict as of last year. Um, oh seriously, oh. and it's 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 really a, you know kind of gang wars about in part about what about who controls the gold mines. Um, oh my god! Because goodness. Sudan has a lot of gold mining. Um, yeah, but in just the last year, almost fourteen thousand people have been killed, civilians on the Are just, you just fighting. Yeah, and a lot of people have been displaced. So. Uh, Marie Claude uh, Lalonde from Aid to the Church in Need is going to tell us about the work that Aid to the Church is in Need is doing in that country and in that region, actually, because it affects the whole region. Mm. So that's uh, where God helps in okay. about five minutes. And then, Mark, you're going to be uh, back with us to tell us something good that's happening somewhere. Maybe not in Hollywood this time, but what goods, what goods? what is good in Europe? Because I just returned from a five-week oh, trip right. to Europe. Yeah. Right. Five weeks. Wow. I know. Huge blessing. Must be nice being an undercover uh, missionary. <laughs> I was in deep cover. Deep cover. Okay. So in about 15 minutes, what's good in Europe with Mark Matthews, our undercover uh, Europe missionary? European missionary. Europe, uh, Why not? We still need them. Yeah. We need to do some undercover missions everywhere. So that's in about 15 minutes to tell us what's good in Europe. <laughs> and uh, and then, okay, so we're going to learn in our second half hour, Mark, we're going to learn about a new pro-life video series that's aimed at Gen Zers. I don't know how, mm. if you're good with like Gen Zs, I don't know. Um, I, I just know they're the youngest. No, I think that Gen there's Z. a younger, I think there's a younger, a younger, I think Gen Zers are like, like. 15 or 16 to 26 year olds or 12 to 28 like that age group okay yeah but yeah. but no letter comes after z so how can there be an even i, younger I don't group? know i think we're gonna Do we maybe, loop back maybe and go, go back to gen to a? a i don't know i don't know what they're gonna figure this out <laughs> but anyway this this is that age group that i i'm gonna say 16 to 26 year olds um, okay this pro-life video series is called forbidden discussions Mm -hmm. forbidden discussions Ooh. and it's produced by the healing the culture institute they have what they call mm -hmm. respect life university that mm -hmm. offers these pro-life video resources and so the president uh and ceo of healing the culture camille Pauly, will be joining us to tell us all about respect for life university and also about this new video series forbidden discussions so that's mm -hmm. going to be in about 25 minutes. Yeah, they do really good work. Um, and then at the end of the program, we're going to be reconnecting with Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc, uh, okay. Canadian uh, husband and wife duo. They call themselves Found Together. Um, and in fact, they're probably going to be at the March for Life because they sometimes help out with the music, especially at the vigil for the March for Life. Mm. Um, we met them in October 2021 and they have new music and they have new babies. Uh, oh, awesome. And so it's time to have them back on the show. So we're going to be speaking with Found Together. That's Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc in about 45 minutes. And if people are not going to be around because they're driving or they can't listen to the full show in one sit, remember that you can always go to our website, eselmedia.org. And you can click on podcasts, and that's where you can listen to all our programs. You can also get the Salt and Light Hour wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, I don't know, yeah, you probably know this, Mark, but you can watch Salt and Light Television if you're in Canada, obviously, on cable. But if you're outside of Canada, like in Los Angeles, you mm -hmm. can go online, slmedia.org, and check out Salt and Light Plus to find out how to subscribe. So you can stream our network and watch all our programs on demand uh, through salt and light, slmedia.org slash plus, salt and light plus. So lots of good information there, Mark. We're going to start with Very a song. Good. good little song as we always do. Here is Found Together with Home from their album, Found Together. From the distant coast to the mountain top. From the depths of the sea, if you are there, it's home. When the walls cave in and the ground gives out, when the earthquakes beneath this home will be strong. Oh, where else would I go to exalt another? Feel at home. 
listening to Found Together with Home from their album Found Together. And we're going to be speaking with Found Together, who are Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc, at the end of the program. So I hope that you'll still be around for that. And now it's time for... Where God Helps, with Marie-Claude Lalonde from Aid to the Church in Need, Canada. Marie Claude, welcome back to the Salt and Light Hour. Thank you. It's good to see you. So, uh, Sudan. Wh- I, this is something that I don't think anybody knows what's happening in Sudan. No, exactly, because the mass media never talk about Sudan. No. Um, you know, we used to have one Sudan, and it yes. was separated in two, and now we have Sudan and South, and South Sudan. Sudan. And I want to talk about Sudan, just to make things clear. Yes. Uh, There's a war going on for one year now um, between uh, people who want to be in power. So it's the army and a, let's call them a rebel group, or it's the RSF, Rapid Support Forces. Uh And they're fighting for a year but the fights are quite heavy and the toll on the people is unbelievable. Uh, infrastructures are destructed. The main airport is not working anymore. Lack of electricity. Um, reservoirs for clean waters uh, are empty at the moment. So it, and, and people are hungry. It's mm-hmm. uh, terrible. And we had more than 13,000 dead and uh, 6 million internally displaced and almost 2 million who went mainly to South Sudan. And we hear nothing about it. Nothing. Um, And where is the church in all of this? Well, the the church has always been a safe heaven for people in Sudan. And that's a bit the same. People first went to the churches to get help. Uh, But with time passing, missionaries and religious communities were forced to leave the the country. So um, some parishes, hospitals, schools are no longer functioning. uh, And... All the seminarians that were studying in the country have fled. So basically, the church is uh, reduced to a bare minimum. And maybe it's interesting to say that there are about 5% of Christians in Sudan. Mm -hmm. But now, the situation being so difficult, we don't know exactly how many are still there. So that's the difficult thing about the church, but there's also positive aspects. Okay. And uh, I would like to focus on that. Yes, it's nice please. to have sometimes good news. I yes. said that seminarians had to leave, but they are all now in South Sudan, where they're continuing their studies over there. So South Sudan took them. And maybe uh, it, it's unusual, but when the Sudan split in two, they kept one single Episcopal conference. And so it makes these exchanges much easier. And so the seminarians are still uh, studying. Mm -hmm. Uh, Displaced people uh, who went to South Sudan also are receiving help through different programs, but it includes the church. Mm -hmm. And I have the testimony of a project partner who said, you know, war cannot stop life. We had 16 baptisms and 34 adult confirmations this year. Wow. So um, for him, 
the church in itself is a sign of hope. And uh, he added, we need to keep this hope in the current darkness we're going through. Yeah. And the Pope also is playing a role in trying to raise awareness and denounce what's going on, especially for the people. I mean, the church doesn't take sides. What They, they are on the side of the people. Mm -hmm. They want to help the people. And that's their main focus right now in Sudan and now South Sudan with the displaced uh, the displaced people and the seminarians. And the seminarians. Yeah, what a, what a great uh, story about the baptisms and confirmations. That is yes. absolutely a sign of hope. Now, I know aid to the church in need, you're not just uh, providing support directly to the church because you're doing a lot of other support through partners. But I guess, would you be doing special support to the churches in Sudan right now because they've been diminished so much? Yes, we, of course, we are determined to help the church stay wherever the church can stay. However, we will also be implicated, and we are currently implicated mm -hmm. also in South Sudan because they are receiving displaced right. people. Of and so uh, the needs are also great in South Sudan, but uh, whatever the church needs, uh, I just hope the information will get to us because sometimes in conflict zone, that's a part of the problem but if the information comes to us we'll do whatever we can to for the church to stay strong and to stay strong for its people and um that's the role of a to the church in need so i'm just curious because i think previously maybe not with you but i know we've heard about south sudan and some problems that have been happening there are things yes. better in south sudan that they're able to take this influx of refugees and and uh to support in 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 any way uh not easy that's <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's my main answer it's not easy uh south sudan has its own problems mm -hmm. uh but it is stable enough to uh accommodate okay. the refugees uh but of course they will lack means to support all these people yes. and that's where i think the church the presence of the church is very yes. important yes uh, absolutely well then i guess as always we need to pray and pray for sudan and pray for the church in that region and and pray for the work that uh, you guys aid to the church in need and other partners on the ground are uh, are doing and and help financially because i'm sure you need uh, always in need of donations uh, so of course of course we 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 receive a lot of money into in the in the head of some people oh yes. wow it's, it's great but we can't cover the needs that are presented to us the needs are always greater than the money we have absolutely so and there's oh. always people that can help um so i hope that uh, our listeners can uh, can be of assistance there but but prayer is the most important important thing always so we're always reminded very to important pray. absolutely yes and our project partners always mention that they mm -hmm. are praying for their benefactors so anyone who helps through prayer or donations well just be aware you they, have some people in sudan in south sudan praying, for, praying you for you yes. absolutely and I, and I, and what a nice thought maybe we can pray specifically for those people children that were baptized or that were confirmed or received into the church in Sudan this Easter. Um, uh, what a what a specific, what a beautiful and specific prayer that, that would Fantastic. be. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Marie-Claude, thank you for uh, telling us about what's happening in this region because we don't, we didn't know. And, uh, and again, thank you for the work that you and your partners are doing. Thank you. Marie-Claude Lalonde is the National Director of Aid to the Church in Need Canada. You can find out more about Aid to the Church in in Need Canada, acn-canada.org, and in the U.S., churchinneed.org. Hi, I'm Danielle Savard, and you're listening to the Salt and Light Hour with Deacon Pedro. You can watch Salt and Light television streaming and on demand on our website and also on your Roku and Amazon Fire app. Go to slmedia.org slash plus to find out how to subscribe. And now it's time for What's Good in Hollywood. With our Hollywood undercover missionary, Mark Matthews, who is telling us what's good in Europe. 
Yeah, that's I know what's going on here. I mean, come on, you hired me to do a job, and I'm not talking about Hollywood. I'm talking about know. Europe. Must be a good job you just spend five yeah. weeks a year. <laughs> well, so I just returned from a fantastic five week trip in Europe. Part of that was for work, but three weeks of it were for a vacation. Nice. Um, and it was it, it was amazing. I got to spend the Triduum in Rome, the Stations of the Cross at the Colosseum, the wow. Easter Vigil inside oh St. Peter's Basilica. Wow, good for you. That's like a once in a lifetime yeah. seat. Um, and then uh, after that, I did a spiritual pilgrimage through France, uh, hitting no less than seven different pilgrimage sites, including Lourdes, Lisieux, and the legendary retirement cave oh. of St. Mary Magdalene in St. Baume in yes, France. Yes, yes. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes. There's, you know, the, the history is <laughs> Yeah, is the, dark, the Mary but... Magdalene ended up in France. Go figure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to see the, the, the legendary cool. cave. Cool. So, um, so, so there's so much to take in when you're doing yeah. a trip like this. You know, you have the entire riches of Christendom just passing you by and you literally have like 60 seconds to look yeah, at them yeah, yeah. sometimes and so i did what any other sensible human being would do and that is you take out your cell phone and you just take pictures of everything right yeah yeah of course <laughs> and i'm not at a place in doing this because you go to any of these locations and you see nothing but thousands if not yeah. millions of cell phones being held up in the air yes. by everybody taking pictures of things yes and so it gets get me thinking you know and as i like to joke i'm like well don't just live life you know or don't live life just document it you know yes and, yes but but why why do why do people deacon why does everyone take pictures of everything i i don't know because they i guess they don't want to forget they want to memorialize it I, yeah yeah i, I kind of think so i think it, i mean if I was asking myself, I, it's kind of like, well, I want to share this moment with yeah, with others too. You know, yeah. with other people. It's also a bit of I want to remember this moment mm -hmm. myself. You know, and I mean, I personally like a joke. I'm I'm a bit of a digital pack rat. I'll, I'll take I I just keep a copy of everything on my hard drive. And I mean, yeah. if I'm going to be canonized someday, I mean, they're going to have to have something to work with, right? You know, so <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Deacon's like, you're not getting canonized no, just because no, of that comment. No. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> but, but it is a really kind of strange phenomenon, I think, that we're just incessantly, you know, want to take pictures of everything. And so, so I, I kind of, you can't help but ask, like, is there something deeper at play here? And I think it's, if we really kind of are honest with ourselves, it's something maybe more along the lines of, I want to be remembered. And maybe even my life is so fleeting. Let me try mm. to eternalize myself in some way, shape, or form. And I think, I think you know, the finiteness of our existence is something that we dread so much. We can't often look at the reality of it straight in the eye. And so I think it's kind of the subconscious latent fear within us sometimes. And... You know, we're sort of, perhaps, I might suggest, we are subconsciously sort of trying mm -hmm. to eternalize ourselves. But what I would ask is that if all that remains of us after our death is 100,000 JPEG images, that's kind of a sad ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it <laughs> And is. I think what we, what we should be saying, or we should be remembering to say is, God, please remember me. Mm. And this is where our faith comes in. Um, and I think it's kind of funny, you know, the Lord backs us up, so to mm -hmm. speak, you know, to use techie speak, he literally saves us. Yes. And he saves <laughs> us which much, with much better resolution than 100,000 images. Yeah. In fact, he remembers every little detail about our lives. And even when we are with him in heaven, he goes beyond that. He says, we will be made, we shall be like him in mm -hmm. first john three it's like wow he brings us even into sort of a greater existence mm -hmm. and so i think my kind of takeaway if i had a message for today would be is you know we don't need to worry about documenting our whole life you know i have faith in our salvation that sometimes maybe not taking that photograph is kind of a way of saying god i'm going to trust you to remember this moment mm. Now, there's an interesting, perhaps, I think, kind of connection with religious art. And 
what I noticed is that when you're traveling Europe and you see all these most beautiful, most transcendent works of art, is they embrace two things. So first of all, is a style of realism. And that is basically just what a photograph would see, what what uh, the, any camera could reproduce. Mm -hmm. But they also have a very strong, unrealistic, almost iconographic style that only an artist could create. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the artist didn't know how to do realistic photos. You can look at, you know, works of art from the same period. And it's like, oh yeah, they very clearly can do that. Yeah. And that's a really interesting question to kind of address too. Well, why did they do that? Why, why is it not just perfect realism? And I think it's that this art, that the realism, they're representing both our present reality with the realism, but the metaphysical, spiritual aspect of our existence, of what lies beyond the veil of reality with this sort of this iconographic aspect of it. And my favorite, my absolute favorite example of this was from the Basilica of the Holy Rosary at Lourdes. And they have a mosaic for every mystery of the rosary, 15 of them there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, for, I mean, they're, they're beautiful. They're beautiful, realistic images of, they have an element of realism for what yeah. those moments look like. But you can also see... Um, you know, the heavens in them, the halos, you can see the Holy yeah. Spirit and angels are all revealed and they have this iconographic quality. And so it, it, those kinds of images acknowledge both essentially our real existence, but also the metaphysical yeah. spiritual existence. And so part of me is going, well, how do I get that camera? You know, how do I get that camera that <laughs> wow. adds the halo yeah. on me or the lack of one? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what a beautiful uh, reflection on that. And I presume that you took pictures of those mosaics just so that so you can share them I, with me. <laughs> I did, yes. I incessantly took pictures yeah, of every pictures. aspect of those mosaics. But yeah, absolutely. I think that, that, yeah, that's what icons do, that icons are not mm -hmm. so much the way we see the saints, but how God sees the saints. Mm -hmm. um, I've also heard that description. So how does God see us? That's the camera that I would like to and, have. Yeah. And it's kind of like they're beautiful too, because really it's just one image that captures everything. It's not a hundred thousand images. Yeah, exactly. And it's you all know? there. It's very clear. And it's, and it's, and it's alive almost like it's looking at you. Yes. And, and, and yeah. every time you see it, you see something new or something. Exactly. Different. It's one image that shows the whole moment, wow. the whole act. So. Yeah. Well, there you go. A lesson there that that's how we need to start looking at the world and not so much through through the camera lens yeah um, but yeah also, don't worry god will save us god if we will ask save him us to. yes yes save us yeah. on a on an eternal hard drive yeah don't rely on spiritual capture mode in ios because it doesn't exist i can <laughs> i can assure you of that all right you 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 can you can develop that uh <laughs> i'll work on it in my spare work time on that. yeah okay well thank you thank you for sharing this uh, with us today and i'm glad you had a good uh good time in europe and next time amazing. next time bring me with you <laughs> i'd love to you can I'd... be my co-undercover agent i can do that i'd be happy to do that okay so what's good in europe and uh everywhere else with mark matthews our hollywood undercover missionary you can follow him at hu missionary Coming up in our second half hour, Forbidden Discussions, and we reconnect with Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc, aka Found Together, so stay tuned. Welcome to the Salt and Light Hour Part 2, I'm Deacon Pedro. Healing the Culture has a very unique philosophical approach to pro-life education. You may remember their video series for children, Philo and Sophie. It teaches children to understand pro-life principles as they learn to seek the good of others above the good of self, and really, that's how we build a culture that values and protects all human persons, from conception to natural death. Their latest offering, through their video resource platform, Respect Life University, is Forbidden Discussions, aimed at the Gen Z age group, which is about 16 to 26 year olds. To tell us more, I am now joined by the president and CEO of Healing the Culture, Camille Pauly. Camille, welcome back to the Salt and Light Hour. It's good to see you. 
Hi, Deacon Pedro. It's good to see you too. Thanks it, for having me back. It's always exciting to 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 hear what you guys are up to. Um, and I want to hear about this new uh, series, Forbidden Discussions. But tell us a little bit before that, a little bit about Respect Life University, because I don't think we've actually spoken about that on this show. No, we haven't. Respect Life University is healing the culture's vi uh, video, web-based video platform. Okay. For all of our free videos. And there's a ton of stuff up there. There's, uh, there's curriculum materials for high school kids. There's animated stuff. Um, for high school and college, we have a program called Philo and Sophie that you yes, and I talked about yes. before for littles. Yes, it's free and it's like kind of like Veggie Tale kind of stuff where you're learning yeah. morality and virtue and goodness and pro life, but it's kind of like Sesame Street where it's fun and there's songs and puppets. So that's what Respect Life University does. It's a platform where parents, teachers, um, kids, adults can get pro life content in video format in all kinds of different lengths. Some are sixty seconds, okay. some are feature length. Um, okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was because I was going to ask that. So is it for anyone? So teachers yep. can access it, but you don't have to be a yep. teacher to access it. No. And, um, and it's, and it's available on your website, healingtheculture.org. Um, right. so then some, uh, one of the offerings is this new series, um, called forbidden discussions. Um, tell us about that. What is it? Yeah. It's kind of provocative. We, yes. we want to make sure we're reaching every kind of audience. Uh, people who are already pro-life, people who think they're pro-life but not sure, and people mm. who are not pro-life. Okay. So this series is aimed at Gen Z, mm -hmm. um, and particularly um, within between maybe like the 17 and 24-year-old range, Okay. Um, and kids who are not necessarily pro-life. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, mostly trying to reach kids who are not pro-life, not sure where they stand, uh, maybe even pro-choice, but willing to listen. And so we studied this audience a lot to understand what are the issues they care the most about that makes them be pro-choice or makes them persuaded by pro-choice okay how do they listen to arguments when they're listening to arguments of the on the other side of issues they care about how do they listen what makes them open their ears um and then in what way and what delivery do we you know in, in what way do we articulate mm -hmm. those issues that best resonates with them and so we found that we need to be online on an online platform for these kids. And we needed to use a debate methodology that showed them how to debate. Because kids today, Gen Z, don't know how to debate. They don't okay. even think- No, they, they don't know how to communicate. Yeah. No, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah. They, and they don't know, not all Gen Zers, but the vast majority. I know. They don't even know, they don't believe that a debate is legitimate. They're being taught that there's one side, here's what the side is. If people don't agree with this, they're evil. And you shut them out and block them out and cancel them. So what we did is we came up with a title, Forbidden Discussions, because if you have discussions about pro-life online, you're canceled, right? So they're right. Forbidden. So that we would be provocative with these kids and they would find us online and start listening and watching to these debates. And we, t in a way, kind of subtly, we teach them how to debate. Mm -hmm, so we have a male and a female and they yeah. switch sides. So in one of the episodes, the, the woman would be pro-life and the male is pro-choice. And in the other episode, they switch. You know, she's pro-choice and he's pro-life. So that shows it, it, what it's intended to do is help these Gen Z kids understand if you really want to understand truth, you have to be willing to look at both sides okay. and consider the arguments and give way where somebody has a good argument. And um, and they do that. You know, sometimes the pro-choice makes a good point and she has to give way to it. Um, but then she comes around a different way. And mm -hmm. so it's a way to really help lay out the pro-life arguments to kids who aren't taught to question anymore. Um, you know, and this time not taught to question because what they're being taught is error and, you know, our mm -hmm. opponents don't want them to hear the truth because it's very persuasive. Mm -hmm. So, so we've you, been very successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like it. So you have two young hosts, you said a male and a female, and, and they argue or, or they debate. Yes, yes. Tell us how they do it and then tell us some sure. of the topics that, sure. that you've chosen to highlight. So it's partly scripted, okay. but we, they get a topic. Um, and they see the topic when they arrive, and then they're told whether they're pro-life or pro-choice. And so they they flip back and forth. And like I said, it's partly scripted because we wanted to make sure they covered the issues that we want. Yes. And the kind of, we want them to say certain things and make certain arguments. Um, but it's three minutes long. So they, they it's kind of like a speed debate where they mm -hmm. get up the best stuff. And the topics that we covered, interestingly, kids are still debating, is this a human being or not? And it, which is wonderful. You know, it's yeah. wonderful that they still care about mm -hmm. whether or not this is a human being, because some of the studies are showing that kids don't even care anymore, that if it's a person, not a person, we don't care. We want to do what we want to do. Right. 
But a lot of Gen Zers do still care. So we covered that topic. Is it a human being? Is it a person? Does it have any moral worth and legal protectability? But we also covered issues for kids who don't care whether it's a human being or not. You know, what's really making you happy? Is this mm -hmm. really noble? Is abortion courageous? Is it leading you to a life of, of you know, prosperity and goodness and happiness and truth and all the mm -hmm. things you seek? Uh, and it, it gets very, you know, it gets very high level, but in a way that modern kids can relate to. Um, so we, we love this series. Forbidden Discussions has been on, we launched it about a month, maybe a couple months ago. Okay. And yeah, and we have tens of thousands of views and great comments from kids who are watching it who are not necessarily pro-life. That's wonderful. So I, uh, how many, so you said they're about, they're three minutes long. How many mm -hmm. are there? There's five episodes right now okay. that cover the biggest issues. And then by the end of this year, we'll put out another five episodes and we'll just keep putting them out every year. As long as we seek feedback from the Gen Z kids who are watching it, what kind of topics do you want to hear? Okay. And do more. And as long as we keep getting more questions from these kids, we'll keep putting them out. Right. And so then right now, the only place where people can access these videos is on the websites through the Respect Life University, or are no, you putting they, them on social media or? They can get them on YouTube too. Okay. If, they, if your listeners go to our YouTube channel, Healing the Culture mm -hmm. on YouTube, they can find the, or just type Forbidden Discussions Yeah. Um, on YouTube. They'll get the whole series for free on YouTube. The benefit to going to our website, healingtheculture.org, is that you'll get all of our Exactly. Videos. They get to and see everything them, else that's mm -hmm. there. You'll get them packaged the way you need them. And you get all of the extra materials too for free. So like the kids show comes with teacher tools and, and parent tools and games and activities and coloring pages and all that kind of fun yeah. stuff. And yeah, no, there's great stuff on this website and and tons of, tons of wonderful resources. Um, I'm always excited, as I said, about what you guys are doing so what's what's next are you going to i mean obviously going to continue with more well, of these. we we will continue it uh, deacon pedro this gen z is really important to us these yeah. kids are very confused the studies are all showing that these gen z kids more than any other generation are more confused about sexuality more confused about marriage relationships gender um they're even more confused about reality than than any other kid since we've been studying mm -hmm. thoughts on, on issues like that, on moral issues. They don't even know, they're even starting to question reality. What is reality? Yeah. Am I, is, is a human being even a thing, mm -hmm. right? Or can I define myself however I want to be? So mm -hmm. now you have Gen Zers who are starting to say, well, I'm not a person, I'm not a human, I'm a thought, right? So now there's this whole movement towards, I'm a thought in a, in a head of some being, some other being, or I'm an animal, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a fluffy Yes. Um, I'm a furry. They call them furries sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this big confusion about who we are and what we are. And they're, they're, they're lost. They're very, very lost uh, age. So our, our goal right now is really hitting that Gen Z group, but we'll move younger. We have Philo and Sophie. We've never targeted uh, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. Yeah. So the, the yeah. Tween agers. Yeah. Yes. The tweens. And um, I can't let your listeners know everything, but we have an awesome series we've been filming. We have our own film studio and we've mm -hmm. been filming it. It's going to combine live actors and animation um, in a in a surreal world where they're working through moral issues and ethical dilemmas. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's aimed, like I said, at fourth, fifth and sixth graders and oh, all wonderful. content builds pro-life, uh, builds you know pro-life ethics and values in kids, but in, in ways that don't directly discuss abortion yet. Uh, or right. a suicide. Yeah, we didn't want right. to, you know, right. kind of violate their innocence. But uh, I think parents are going to love it. It's highly useful for teachers in the classroom. And that'll be coming out at the end of this year. Oh, wonderful. That's good. Uh, that that age group is is lacking, not just in pro-life resources, but just Catholic in, in general they're, media resources. So Yeah, they're kind of the missing group. Yeah, People it is. aim at the littles, they aim at the high school, college. But those four through six, seven, yeah. eight grade, get lost. Yeah. Yeah, middle school. Anyway, so that's <laughs> good. Okay, good news. Um, thank you. Um, always exciting to hear from you and to to hear about the work you're doing as we go next week here in Canada towards the March for Life in Ottawa. Yes. So uh, thank you for telling us about this today, Camille, and again, for all the great work that you do. You got it. Blessings on your march and on safety for everybody. And uh, people can find everything at healingtheculture.org. You can learn more about Healing the Culture, Respect Life University, and Forbidden Discussions at their website, healingtheculture.org. And to listen to this conversation again or the full program, go to slmedia.org. Here now is Found Together with Find Me from their album Found Together. I waited till the old
almost said good night. This heavy weight to carry all my life. And I would never lie to you, but I couldn't give you the whole truth. Here it is, it's such a mess, I know. Tears and late hours to give me your attention. You didn't walk, so no one would blame you. You shoulder me, you follow me, you want this. Whisper to me, just let me love you. Listening to Found Together with Find Me from their album Found Together. We first met husband and wife duo Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc in October 2021, and that's when we found out why they call themselves Found Together. Over the last couple of years, Jesse and Kathleen have been busy building their marriage and family, but also with a few new songs. They also are quite active online with monthly live worship sessions on social media and also monthly what they call Catholic Date Night. So to tell us all about that, I am now joined by Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc. Welcome back to the Salt and Light Hour, you guys. It's good to, to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, thanks for having thanks us. So and it was super fun. Back. Yeah, it was super fun to see you in person in November at Renew. That's right. Mm. That was fun. See, Jesse it was a really forgot. cool event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like did i see yeah, did like, i go somewhere is that who you were <laughs> you got out of my memory right now yeah you got out of the house um yeah it was yeah. it was a great event so um and congratulations on baby number four mm -hmm. yeah thank, thank you. you born a couple months ago as we record yeah yes he's good very, we'll keep him you'll keep him okay good good and yeah. he seems he seems to be at least for now very musical Yes. At least for now. Extremely. Yeah. Yeah. He Until doesn't have any options. Get irritated eventually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, I want to talk first about the music, um, because we're going to be playing. We're going to be ending the show with a, a great song that you guys wrote called "Permission." So, I want to get a little bit of the story of that. But I understand that you're also working, hoping to have a new EP. Um, so I'm just curious to know if you are constantly, I mean, I know that you just had a baby and, and you guys are busy with other important things, but are you constantly writing or, or how is that process for you? Ever since we, um, since our first album and started singing together under the name found together, mm -hmm. our plan and our process is setting aside Tuesday nights for music. So since, um, We've launched this new crowdfunding for this new worship EP. Tuesday nights are again our music night to okay. either write or just like 
to pray about writing or just talk about it together, how that process is going. So um, that's what it's like for us, because unless it's on the calendar, things like yeah. that don't happen. We're both, none of, neither of us really are the kind of people that are like, oh, I'm so inspired. I have to sit down and write. Like, that's just not. No, it's not your the thing. The gift yeah. that God yeah, given us in that way. It's like, time. yeah, we need to so like, how's sit it, down and make sense. How's it going? <laughs> are you um, just talking about it or is it? It's not a great no, prayer. We've got a lot of audio recordings that some of them are really going somewhere. Like little voice memos. Yeah, voice okay, memos okay. and that kind of thing. And so for me, a lot of the time I'll write in the car as well. And so like oh, okay. on my way to work, or yeah. on my way back, you know, yeah. just kind of running through a few like ideas and then bring them to Tuesday night. And right. Okay, hey, sounds good. So crowd, you're, you so you're crowdfunding so people through your website can get access to to learn about that if they want to support you um tell me about permission well that was a song that was commissioned by here comes james oh here comes our baby he's coming oh. to join this call and Hello, this james. James, if you'd like to see <laughs> oh okay. okay there's james permission was commissioned by um kathleen's father actually he mm -hmm. was doing a documentary is doing a documentary is doing a documentary mm -hmm. it has yet to be released on uh the late father bob Bedard. Bedard, who is the founder of Companions of the Cross mm -hmm. in Ottawa. And his whole, um, I guess you could say his slogan was give God permission. Uh, he was a very, very holy priest. Yes. And so, uh, so yeah, he gave us some, some ideas and some, some things that he wanted us to include in the, in the song. And, uh, and we set out to write it. And so it was a fun process. Mm -hmm. It yeah, is. And there was a, a fun music video as well that we were able to record a music video of kind of like um, us with a bunch of other young adults in adoration, basically, with yeah. the, the monstrance and this priest and incense. It was a really beautiful video. In his parish. In, in, in Father Bob's um, previous parish, yeah. Yeah, if, if our listeners do not know about Father Bob Bedard or of the Companions of the Cross, maybe they were just putting a little you know seed in your heart here. Check him out. The man absolutely will one day be canonized. And I'm really excited, mm -hmm. looking forward to that film. So, so we just plugged in the film that I think is titled also permission or that's the working title yes um and the song we'll get to hear the song at the end of the program today uh so super excited about that and we'll post the video as well on our website so people can can watch okay. it um tell me about the monthly worship night so you have tuesday night set aside for for writing and then you have one one night a month to do worship i tell yeah so how, how can people join into that yeah, so we do that from our from Facebook or Instagram live. Mm -hmm. So at We Are Found Together is both those handles. We started doing live worship nights actually before it was cool, before it was cool online. Oh, okay. Um, it was like right before COVID started. We were like, so we're in this season right now, as as you said, that we've got kids. It's not as easy for us to leave the house and like do in person um, events. And so we were like, how do we? minister to people how do we use our gifts of music but we can be at home mm -hmm. so we were like can we can we do this online like have people just listen in like it's not the same as being in person but we could do it you know wow. so we started doing them um just before covid hit i think it was january of that year um and then we continued them through covid we took a break for a while i don't remember when we stopped and then we stopped but um when we wanted to <laughs> crowdfund and, and create some hype around that and let people know what we're doing, what we sound like and pray with people. We were like, let's do our live worship nights again. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do that once a month and uh, yeah, like people are able to tune in. We just play about four songs. Like it's not a long thing, mm -hmm. but it's just people and their comfort of their home. Like someone messaged me yesterday. We had our a live worship night last night and she messaged us this morning saying, I was so glad that I, I tuned in while I was like cleaning up the kitchen after supper and prayed oh, with you. And wonderful. yeah, so people can just tune in from wherever. And uh, it's nice for us to be able to still offer that music ministry just from home while our kids are sleeping Absolutely. upstairs. Absolutely. And, and what, how, what, a, what a grace, I guess, the Holy Spirit calling you to start that even before it was necessary during covid um so it's once a month is it always on a tuesday night it's not always on a tuesday oh, okay. night so it's, it's often okay, <laughs> you know what it would be nice if we had a regular month but you know with, with kids and whatever's going on we just uh, so, so people want to know when it yeah. is it's usually later in the month yeah so just um yeah follow us or you can join our email list from from our instagram or from our website and um, we okay. do send out 
the details of when it is because not it's nice to change the date for to change it for yeah when people are for available people who are not available you know? on on a tuesday night um okay and yeah. so does the catholic date night is the same idea so the catholic date night is a bit different so what we do is we uh, record a date night. It's it's really geared towards busy couples like ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we interview another couple. I'm really stump stumbling right now. It's okay. So it's a it's a membership for for Catholic married couples I'm or engaged couples. Words. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so we basically we send out a date night episode. We call it every single month. And we host, basically, as you, you press play, we host the couples through a game, like an activity to get them laughing and talking. And then um, we have a pre-recorded interview with another married couple. And they okay. we talk to them about their marriage journey and like what highs and lows, maybe a specific season of their marriage. And then we give the couples who are watching a chance to discuss what they heard in the interview. We give discussion questions and then it ends with um, a time of, of prayer. So we, we give the couples um, basically like a format of how to pray together. Okay. So we started this for couples like ourselves who were, you know, wanting to have more quality time together, but like life is so busy and mm -hmm. like who has time to plan a date night. It's at home, so you don't have to go anywhere to, to have this date night because getting babysitters is hard. And then also to be able to challenge yourselves to actually grow in your faith and what it means to be have the married vocation because there's you know not a lot of resources out there for couples who who aren't like on the brink of divorce like there's a lot mm -hmm. of great resources mm -hmm. for couples who are really struggling which is awesome but we knew that there was um there was a gap in terms of supporting couples who you know maybe they're just married in their first you know few years of marriage who want to have a strong foundation and keep that strong foundation of communication and faith and prayer, but like, don't know how to do it together. Mm. So we love, we love um, our couples who are joining us because they just really are intentional about their mm. marriage vocation. Like marriage is, it takes that intentionality, right. To have fun together, to communicate, to right. learn about your faith. And so, yeah, that's what we do with the Catholic so, date night. Okay. So a couple of questions. So people, it's subscription based. People subscribe to join to, to have access right. to yeah. these videos the videos are pre-recorded so it's not live so they can do it whenever they want right do they have to be married yeah well so they're engaged or married couples we okay. i mean i so guess you could sign up unknowingly be single but <laughs> we gear no, towards but I, couples I, yeah couples that are just engaged no i'm just wondering if someone that's dating you know the, 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 if this would be useful for them but the topics are very more specific to couples that are married that's right. Yeah, okay. that's right. There's a whole range of topics. Like we've talked about NFP, for example, mm -hmm. we've talked about what do you do when you're married to somebody who's your personality opposite? We've had yeah. topics okay. on, um, on sex itself. So there's, mm -hmm. it's a whole range of things of things from like fun to serious. Um, and a whole range of, is our latest. Yeah. We had one yeah. on uh, Am Jonathan and Amanda Texera who do wallet win. We had them on and they talked about their Catholic money, money yeah. budgeting resources. And so different. Okay. Different interesting. Topics. Okay. Sounds, sounds great. So people again can find mm -hmm. about that at your website, foundtogether.com. They can. Yeah. Um, okay. Super. We are foundtogether.com. Yeah. Sorry. Did I say the wrong website? It's all right. We are foundtogether.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm really excited. It's always nice to see you guys and to have you on the show. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the new album so that you can start writing some music and start recording so we can uh, get to play it on the show. That'd be mm, awesome. Us too. Thanks, Deacon Pedro. Yeah, All right. Thanks, God bless. Pedro. Take care. And thank you to James for, for par participating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. You too. You too. You can find Jesse and Kathleen LeBlanc and learn all about what they do at their website, wearefoundtogether.com. And to listen to our conversation again or to the full program, go to our website, slmedia.org. Here now to take us out is Found Together with Permission. You're moving in closer. I'm ready to give all to you. All to you. The more that I give you, the more that I want to. Your way makes me whole as your plan unfolds. I give you permission. I give you permission. You're moving in closer. 
to give all to you, all to you. The more that I give you, the more that I want to. Your way makes me whole. As your plan unfolds, I give you permission. listening to Found Together with Permission, and that will take us to the end of our program today. To listen to the full program, go to our website, esomedia.org slash podcast. That's also where we post links to all our guests and resources. Check them out and support their ministries. You can also subscribe to the Salt and Light Hour Catholic Podcast on your podcast app of choice. If you like the program, be sure to give us lots of stars and likes and a good review so that other people can find the show. This week, let's pray for the people in the church in Sudan. Let's pray especially for those who were baptized and received into the church this year in Sudan. Let's also pray for Gen Zers who struggle to make their way in the world and make sense of the world. Let's pray for the March for Life in Ottawa, for the unborn, the, the elderly, those with disabilities, the sick, those with mental illness, and for our politicians. But more importantly, pray for each other and take care of each other. Remember, God never forgets you. Thank you for listening. I'm Deacon Pedro, and this has been the Salt and Light Hour.